Um, in light of the WikiLeaks scandals, I think it's high time that I share with uh, the body of Christ, the world, a dream that God gave me back in May 2014. I haven't shared this dream to anyone for two and a half years, but I believe now is the right time to share it. I had a dream in which I heard very clearly George Stephanopoulos and Auntie Allie are staying near grandmother's house. Now, at the time when I heard this dream, I had to look up who George Stephanopoulos was because I didn't watch him on TV. In fact, I'd never heard of him. As far as I was consciously aware, I'd never heard of him or thought of his name at all. And suddenly this name came very specifically. George Stephanopoulos and Auntie Allie are staying near grandmother's house. So I looked him up, and of course, um, George Stephanopoulos is a political operative. He's been around since the days of Bill Clinton. Here he is on the cover of Time magazine, how the president's men tried to hinder the Whitewater investigation. And then currently, this is what he looks like. He's on um, ABC News working as a journalist. Uh, he is supposed to be a journalist, the host of Good Morning America. Uh, however, there's some other interesting facts about him. He contributed $75,000 to the Clinton Foundation, which obviously puts into question his impartiality, right? Um, there's a conflict of interest here. And the Republicans noted that, so he had to step down as a moderator of the Republican um, nominee debate. I also found it very strange that this journalist sits on the council of foreign relations, the CFR. This is an organization of globalist elites. You have to be an elite, and you have to believe in globalism to belong to this organization. People like Henry Kissinger, Hillary Clinton belong to this organization. Stephanopoulos also used to be the senior advisor and de facto press secretary for Bill Clinton from 1993 to 1996. In his youth, he wanted to be a Greek Orthodox priest like his father was, but now he has left his Christian faith. He uh, practices transcendental meditation with Jerry Seinfeld. I guess some people think they can be Christian as well and, and practice uh, transcendental meditation. We don't believe that you can mix uh, idolatry and Eastern um, occult with Jesus Christ. Auntie Allie, who was that? Auntie Allie, I heard very clearly in my dream, Auntie Allie. It turns out his wife's name is Alexandra Wentworth, and she goes by the nickname Allie. And Grandma, who is that? Well, now we know it's the rights code name for Hillary Clinton. So you see a lot of people refer to Grandma in the presidential debate. Grandma is Hillary Clinton. So here are the people, George Stephanopoulos. Auntie Allie, and Grandma, Grandma Hillary. So, according to this dream, these two people, journalists, uh, the wife is a writer, the wife is a producer, uh, these journalists, people involved in TV, are staying near grandmother's house. Well, guess what has just been leaked by WikiLeaks on the 11th of October, Leaked emails by Clinton confidant John Podesta reveal something that is directly related to the dream that God gave me two years ago. Leaked were a list of journalists who take their marching orders from Hillary Clinton. These journalists were invited in April 2015 to an off-the-record meeting on how to sell Hillary Clinton to you, the public. Here are their names. 38 journalists who are not reporting the news, but are trying to mold your mind, trying to mold public opinion. And when you watch them, you can see they're constantly engaged in campaigning for one side, not reporting the news or the truth, but actually actively campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Take a look at the fourth name. What do you see? George Stephanopoulos. Take a look at how many names 
belong to the New York Times. What a shame. The New York Times is no longer a, an objective source of news or information, but a totally biased um, operatives for the Clintons. Look at how many names are under CNN invited to this secret meeting. Here are then 38 reporters, never to be trusted again. Now my question is, who's missing? Why wasn't Fox News invited? See, many people think that Fox News is in the tank with them, but hey, we have some evidence here that Fox News, yes, has some people who are on the left, but they also have some balancing viewpoint on the right, and they have some independent voices and some libertarian voices. And so Hillary Clinton did not invite Fox News, anyone from Fox News, to be part of this secret meeting. How interesting. No wonder Mrs. Clinton is always smiling to the camera, always smiling no matter how many scandals her name and her reputation is dragged through. Doesn't matter that the public heard about 50,000 deleted emails. She's still smiling. Doesn't matter about the Benghazi hearing where four Americans died because she told the military to stand down and not help them. Doesn't matter about the presidential debates and the questions that she was going to be asked. She's always smiling. She knows something that you don't. The press is in the tank for her. She's an insider, and you're not. She can get away with it, and you can't. The collusion between the mainstream media and the state, the government, is the root of public disinformation right now. If you turn on most of the mainstream media, you will get disinformation. They're not giving you information to help you decide what to do. They are trying to mind control you. They're giving you propaganda. And this collusion between the media and the government causes a lot of disinformation, insider corruption, and abuse of power. WikiLeaks leaked out an email from the former chairman of the National Endowment of the Arts, which shows that Democrats conspired to produce an unaware and compliant citizenry. Here's an email from Bill Ivey to John Podesta, who was the manager, the campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. Quote, Bill Ivey says, Secretary Clinton is not an entertainer and not a celebrity in the Trump-Kardashian mold. What can she do to offset this? As I've mentioned, we've all been quite content to demean government, drop civics, and in general, conspire to produce an unaware and compliant citizenry. The unawareness remains strong, but compliance is obviously fading rapidly. This problem demands some serious, serious thinking. Wow, is that amazing? The left has just told you what it thinks of you, America, what it thinks of the folks, that you are dumb, that you are unaware, and that you should be made to comply. You're to submit to their political will. It's an embarrassment, but I believe it's more than embarrassing. I believe it's demonic. When you can treat the folks that way, when you can talk about people that way, you are demonic. WikiLeaks further revealed Hillary Clinton confidants mock evangelicals and conservative Catholics in the Podesta emails. Democrats close to Clinton show a disdain for Christianity and called Hispanic leaders like Bill Richardson needy Latinos. If you are a Christian, if you're a Bible-believing, church-going Christian, this should matter to you. I do not understand how so many blacks in America go to church and yet voted for Obama. I said eight years ago, what's going to happen? If you vote based on race, you're racist. You need to vote based on the policy and the ideology, the ideas of the person. Yet in America, so many people go to church. 
I know blacks go to church and 90% of them vote for Obama. That means that your belief in Christ did not influence your choice. That is a shame. That is a shame. If we vote for people based on their gender or their race, we would be sexist or racist. America, you're better than that. And eight years of Obama are going to continue into 12 years if you vote for someone who has a disdain for Christianity, a disdain for the uninformed public, so they call. John Halpin, from the center of American progress, what a misnomer, wrote to Clinton's campaign manager and communications manager, John Podesta and Jennifer Palmieri, quote, Friggin' Rupert Murdoch baptized his kids in Jordan where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Suddenly, they're mocking Christians who go to Israel, right? You want to come to Israel with me? I'll take you to Israel. I'll baptize you in the Jordan, the Sea of Galilee, and nobody has a right to mock you for your faith. Many of the most powerful elements, he continues to go on, Many of the most powerful elements of the conservative movement are all Catholic. It's an amazing bastardization of the faith. They must be attracted to the systematic thought and severely backwards gender relations. Nice one. This is what the left thinks about people who believe the Bible. We have a right to believe that God believes in morality and family. Family is made of a man and a woman and their children. It's not made of two men or two women. You want to do that privately? There's freedom in our countries to do that. There's never been a problem in modern time. But that's not what they want. They want to tear down Christianity. It is an antichrist movement. Now, can you imagine if this had been said of Muslims or of Islam, what would Obama do? President Obama would immediately Get out there in front of the camera and condemn Islamophobia. In fact, President Obama has said, quote, the future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. Hillary Clinton would condemn, as she has, anti-Muslim rhetoric. Obama has further said, it is the responsibility of all Americans of every faith to reject discrimination. Well, then, by those words and by that standard, we must reject Hillary Clinton. We must reject someone who has nothing but contempt for Christians and conservative family traditional values. But you know, they're all silent. When the left's comments are blatantly anti-Christ, let's not mince words, they are anti Christ. The left are silent. There's no condemnation of the blatant discrimination. None at all. Because mocking Christ and persecuting Christians will become characteristic of the end times. Jesus already said in the last days that they will kill you and they will think that they do God a service. Never before has so much evil converged on one person. Who is involved in this? Who's connected? Who's intertwined with Hillary Clinton, the corrupt media, the corrupt politicians? There's crime and cover-ups all over the place, beginning with 50,000 deleted emails. The FBI protects her because her husband got on a plane and spoke privately to the attorney general, and they claim they're just talking about their kids. No, not, not about the investigation into her cover-up. Who else converges upon her and supports her? The abortion industry, the murdering of the most vulnerable Americans, of children. That industry supports Hillary Clinton. Foreign donors influence Hillary Clinton. The Saudis and Qatar are funding her. And she has plotted the destabilization of Libya, Syria, and Yemen. 
Now, that's a nice political word for mass murder. We're talking about real deaths. People that somebody loved are dead because of the Obama Clinton's administration interfering in other sovereign nations, including Libya, Syria, Yemen, and the death goes on and on. We're talking about murderers, America. You're going to elect a murderer into political office? I don't care what Trump says, they're words. He hasn't killed somebody. He hasn't started a war. He hasn't deleted emails. He hasn't raped somebody. You guys, America, you need to get a perspective and not be brainwashed, not be controlled by the propaganda coming out of the media. And now you can see Hillary Clinton, even during the debates, provoking war with Russia. It is sheer madness. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what would happen if World War III starts today. I will do that in another video. And after all this convergence of so much evil, she claims that the biggest threat in the world is climate change. No. No, it's not, Miss Clinton. No, it's not. It's not a million times no. The biggest threat is you. The biggest threat is starting a world war either in the Middle East or by proxies or with Russia directly. That is the biggest threat in the world. And I don't believe Donald Trump has any interest to start a war with anyone. He might promote trade. He might get the economy running. But I don't see uh, any indication from him that he wants to start a war. Remember, I received this dream about George Stephanopoulos and Ali and Grandma in May 2014. The meaning has become clear in October 2016, only weeks away from the election. What can we learn from this? Dreams are from God, and more dreams will be given in the end times. Dreams will be given especially to those who believe in Jesus Christ. Number two, record your dreams. If I hadn't recorded that dream, you wouldn't know about that dream right now. Three, it may take time to understand the meaning of a divinely inspired dream. Be patient. Be patient. Mine took over two years to understand. But when the right time came, God gave the understanding, and now you can benefit from that dream God gave. I believe he gave it for the whole world. And number four, we as believers, we as Christians, I believe the Jews as well who are reading the Bible, we need to learn to interpret dreams. Everyone needs to learn to interpret dreams. So uh, I'm going to write a book called The Dream Code, but right now we have two hours of teaching on DVD called The Dream Code. I'm going to add to that teaching, but right now this is what we can offer you, and it's packed full of information, and it's got stuff that's relevant to Donald Trump and the election that's coming up in the States. Let me read to you what Acts chapter 2 promises us. Peter said in verse 16, But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. How wonderful is that? Well, if God's going to do that more and more in the end times, we need to be wise. We need to learn to pay attention, record dreams, and interpret them correctly. I can tell you recently I had another dream about meeting Donald Trump and giving him two pieces of advice. If I feel led of the Lord to share that at a later stage, I will. Right now, I believe that's all I'm permitted to say. I also had a dream just today about uh, Idaho and about nuclear weapons. So again, when the time is right, um, if the Lord permits, I will bring out the meaning of Idaho. If you're interested in Donald Trump, I taught this, I believe, led of the Spirit before Donald Trump announced his candidacy for the United States president. So it's called 10 Things I Learned from Donald Trump, and you can get it from discover.org.au slash shop. All right, I hope you get it. I hope you learn a lot from it. Uh, it is 
based on the Word of God, not just on the personality of Donald Trump, but here's a man who's raised some great kids, successful, and built a good business. This is somebody who can actually not just talk about helping you and improving your lives, but he's actually employed tens of thousands of people and built things and, and given things, uh, given, uh, made things that are worth something. Clinton, Hillary Clinton, has made millions of dollars from giving speeches. She's a career politician. She's an insider. And according to the dream that God gave me, there is a collusion. Long before WikiLeaks revealed it, exposed it to all of us, now we know. God gave me a dream that showed there is a collusion. And maybe George Stephanopoulos is just a symbol of the mainstream media. Maybe a good-looking symbol. A lot of women will just, you know, like somebody or vote for somebody just based on looks or based on gender. Please don't do that. You're talking about somebody who's got a track record of lying to the public, covering up, starting wars. The choice is clear. Pick somebody who's actually built businesses and employed people. He will be so different for America. He'll be so different. God bless you, America. We're praying for you from here in Melbourne, Australia. We love you. We pray that your nation will have revival before Jesus comes. God bless you. And as I mentioned before I go, as I mentioned before, if you'd like to join me on a tour to Israel and Jordan, come with me. Register your interests at discover.org.au slash Israel. We'll go to Israel together. We're going to do it before any war breaks out. We're going to believe we're going to be there at the right time, and it's very safe, and it's very enlightening. It'll be wonderful. It'll bring the Bible to life for you. So please, uh, register your interests as soon as possible. We don't need you to pay right away, but we need to know uh, who are the people that are coming. God bless you. You can come from all over the world, and we'll see you in Israel.